Greens family, Bomani Tayemba here with Brother uh, Topmost and uh, we're here talking about the legacy of Robert Mugabe of Zimbabwe. Yes, Mugabe. When you talk about Mugabe in Zimbabwe, you got to talk about Southern Africa. <clears throat> when you talk about Southern Africa, you talk about what we call in uh, socialist rhetoric the frontline states. Talk about Zimbabwe, Mozambique. Uh, during that time, talking about apartheid South Africa, you know, in, in uh, West Africa, Angola, and Namibia. And so, when you talk about the legacy of Robert Mugabe, you have to write it in the context of the history of the Southern African states and their war of liberation. And so, we're talking about Frilimo, the uh, uh, Liberation Front in Mozambique. We're talking about Angola and the MPLA. <clears throat> We're talking about Namibia and SWAPO, uh, Southern African Liberation Movements uh, in Zambia and, and, you know, just throughout the region, even connected into Tanzania and uh, other regions. But the, in the context, the spiritual center for African people in that region has matriculated into that struggle for liberation in uh, what we call now uh, Zimbabwe, formerly known as the Great Zimbabwe or Manapatapa. You talk about Zimbabwe, you talk about historically, just like you talk about Gao and Manin in West Africa, you know, uh, or, or you talk about <clears throat> Nubia in uh, uh, southern Sudan. Um, historically, based on uh, our ancestors, you talk about the empire of uh, Manapatapa. Above that, north of that, what we what was the Zulu kingdom, you know. And, and so, historically, <clears throat> leading up to the modern age, we're talking about uh, the Shimmeringas, which Mugabe is the result of uh, uh, the... His political policy has been labeled as the third Shimmeringa, the reappropriation of land in Zimbabwe. The first Shimmeringa being uh, the late 1800s war in Zimbabwe against the uh, British colonizers um, led by Mama Nehanda. So, that is the first Shimmeringa. The second Shimmeringa being the War of Liberation from the 60s up to the 80s in which the forces of Zimbabwe were victorious. And it was a grueling war. We're talking about Southern African killing on, you know, the hundreds of thousands scale when you look at it through the region. Understand, what we're dealing with, which we'll get into about Comrade Juju, my comrade, you know, doing his thing down there now. We're seeing that uh, war of liberation matriculate to its ultimate end in Azania. But the history of why Juju was able to do what he's doing is because of what we're talking about now. The legacy of Mugabe. So the second Shimmeringa, the war of liberation, was matriculated out of... When you look at... The Southern African states. And you just have to get into it like this. In Angola, they were colonized by the Portuguese. Namibia had been a German colony after the First World War. They were the, the mandate for that region was given to South Africa. I'm talking about 18, uh, 1918, 1919, 1920. Uh, Botswana had always been virtually a colony of South Africa. They, they you know, the governments, they, they controlled that region. Matter of fact, they came up through that area in the War of Liberation against, uh, uh, in the War of Liberation of Zimbabwe and Angola uh, against the apartheid South Africa. And of course, uh, Kenneth Kaunda and the uh, revolutionary forces in uh, Zambia going to the east coast of Africa with Zimbabwe and Mozambique. Which even though Mozambique was a Portuguese colony and 
Zimbabwe was an English colony based on geographically what, if you study the history of it, something called the Bira Railroad, which was the supply train from the sea to Zimbabwe through Mozambique. So the third war of liberation, the third Shimmeringa has been Mugabe and the ZANU PF government and the land reappropriation, which came out of when the war of liberation was ended in 1980. The agreement was that the British and American governments would pay for the land in Zimbabwe that was owned by the white landowners and they would give up that land and African people would be able to um, matriculate to that land, reestablish our farming colonies, which had been the breadbasket of Africa, the most fertile land in Southern Africa. And so when the United States and Britain, which they always do, uh, went against uh, their signed agreements, another government come into play. That's what you get with democracy. <laughs> one government leaves, the next one come in and say they ain't got nothing to do with the next one. <laughs> do their own thing. Right. When you got a government like Zimbabwe, where Mugabe is there year after year, you have, you're able to have that stability. So whereby which you implement policies and they don't change. And that's the way you establish yourself over time, particularly recovering from being a colony. But then they say that you're being a dictatorship because you don't give up, but you need those years of consistent policy in order to rebuild yourself, particularly coming out of colonialism position as an African country as uh, Zimbabwe was. So after waiting 20 years, they still don't agree to it. In 2000, Mugabe said, okay, all right, uh, African people, I ain't gonna tell you what to do no more. Go get your land. And they did. And they were murdering white people while they were doing it. That's the third Shimmeringa from 2000 up. And now we're seeing vestiges of the history of that, uh, as we're saying with uh, Brother Juju and um, what has become the new war of liberation in Azania um, or with the land reappropriation there. So dealing with, of course, Mugabe and continuing on in that legacy. And when you, like I said, also, when you look at Mugabe and you deal with that, not only do you deal with it in the context of the Southern African region, but you look at it from, of course, the Pan-African perspective. And we were talking about earlier, uh, as we were uh, analyzing the Black Panther movie, talking about real life examples of, uh, you know, Matulu Shakur being convicted uh, of providing material support to the ZANU-PF government, never representing real Pan-Africanism, and understanding from the aspect, from the political perspective from here to there, and looking at it practically as African revolutionaries, looking at what it is that has to be done to bring about the future liberation of African people, even if it had to be through our babies, and our babies, 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 at least have an understanding of what it is that has to be done based upon what it says is empirical evidence of what it is has been the history of every people that's fought for liberation through the history of oppression in the world of human beings. So today we look at a thing from the United States government, what do you call it? Uh, AFRICOM, right? Yeah. They running all around over there. They got the drone wars. They got drone bases in Niger. They got deals with... The United States government has agreements militarily with every single government in Africa except three of them. That's Eritrea, Sudan, and Zimbabwe. So, all 51 other countries have some kind of way of relating to the United States military based upon um, their... And it was uh, your boy, like I said before, Obama, who made that be able to happen. See, a black face, people get emotional, think they're free now because they don't understand neocolonialism under the guise of imperialism. You know, uh, uh, you know uh, it, when you look at what was done during the uh, administration of Barack Obama, when you look at the destruction of the government in Libya, when you look at the matriculation, the escalation of uh, the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, and Syria, more importantly. When you look at the escalation of forces by the United States government in Yemen, in the drone wars, in Kenya, 
when you look at the invasion and the outbreaks of disease in West Africa during his administration. When you look at the establishment, like I said before, the drone bases at Niger, and like we know, the destruction of the Libyan government lead to the enslavement now and the public auction of African people out of West Africa and throughout North Africa. That's what neocolonialism gets you. When you get emotional because you see a black face and you ain't looking at the economic political po policy that they're putting in place and that's what you get uh, perfect so let's some some uh, some of these things so first we talk about robert mugabe uh who is a original member of the organization of african union right uh, which is now uh you know the, the, or, the, the old part the organization part which is the more structural part is right. been removed so he does have the au right which is uh no organization. <laughs> no organization. Uh, just, but, uh, just, just, just no, and then now uh, you mentioned uh, Gaddafi uh, in uh, Libya and another mm -hmm. uh, one of the, the main original members. Mm -hmm. uh, he has been, you know, he has been uh, executed by sacrifice, uh, sacrifice you know, um, uh, by, 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 by who African people in the United States put all their love and energy into. Like I said before, because you don't understand. Yeah, under the uh, Obama politics. administration, he was, uh, you know, he was. It was executed, or right. or what's other word we can use, um, and uh, so now and, and you know and we look at the other faces of that original union. Uh, you know we even look at uh, Kwame uh, Nkrumah. Mm -hmm. You know so you know different things have happened. Uh, even Robert Mugabe, uh, you know, is on the right. house arrest. Okay. So you know we're coming to a point, family, where we talk about a legacy of uh, one of the, you know one of the the last great um, African leaders of uh, you know. The original, uh, the original organization of African Union. So with that, we're also linking mm -hmm. in the future of what the continent is about because now we realize that you know yep. the, all of the main heads of you know the African liberation movement have been you know, have been taken out you know, from you know from between the 1960s mm -hmm. all the way up to now. We, right. we can say in, mm -hmm. in the in the 21st century right. so now we really have to organize ourselves and then what I want our people to look at is the, the, the legacy of Mugabe is, is a legacy of greatness and you can add in all other uh, leaders in that, uh, mm -hmm. that era but our focus on Mugabe is because he did some things that others didn't do right uh, when we're talking about uh, colonialism and right. we're talking about the enslavement of African people on the continent and all of the, the drama that our people have been to, whether on the continent or outside of the continent, being shipped and stolen mm -hmm. from the continent, we see Robert Mugabe put a for force in place to where the goal was naturally to, you know, for the people to get back the land. And I mean, he stood for it and, mm -hmm. he, you know, he dedicated his life right. for it. Um, and I'm not sure if he ever really put in the youth league to put them in a position mm -hmm. to where they can really build on to where they got you know different um representative in every few years similar to the ANC but you know in, in a practical way in a in more, more practical way in a more yeah. way where you know yeah, it could be successful sure. um now that's one of the things they did do but i'm not sure how successful the different uh you know from you know from nelson mandela and sonia well, well, well you know i think but it's kind of meant that, that to was be. one different approach and yeah, yeah. Mugabe had his own approach right. and, I, and I, think, I think it's kind of meant to be and when you look at it from the pan-africanist perspective and you see that mugabe led the way as far as mugabe represents as he represents to his country the third shimmeringa which is a you know what what you might call a a a a a an an, an African revolutionary war in Nehanda, like we were saying earlier, coming from the matriarchal perspective, it was a war started by an African woman. She was sacrificed. She was skinned by the British, and so that dedication to her is the energy that came to the modern time from the decolonization process, overlooking and having the political perspective. Mugabe represents the intelligence of the modern African to understand. It don't matter about what you say about independence, political independence, is we don't own the resources, then it ain't real independence. And that's what he stands for. Absolutely. And so and by him taking back the land, that's what each and every single country in Africa has to do now because they're all, to a certain degree, not in control of their land and resources. And even with Mugabe, deals that have been made 
in regards to, at least he made a law that says if you're going to be a white person or any foreigner and own land in, Mo in Zimbabwe, 51% of it has to be owned by an African. Absolutely, and that's the way we should do. We should be, uh, you know, like we talk about, look at the shirt family, Africa for Africans, and that's what it should be. And you know, one of the, the, the statements, because sometimes people are confused with what it means, what we talk about Africa for Africans, that means the African people in the masses should own and control the right. resources and every aspect Not of the nation living in the continent. Corporations. Not the European white devils that, that, are, that have invaded the continent over the last several hundred years <clears throat> and, 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 and forced their way in. So it's only right uh, that Mugabe did that and it took a lot of courage because unfortunately, you know, we didn't see the, the same thing on the rest of the content, but that is a firm layout of what Mugabe stood for, where we as a people, in order for us to really build our true independence, we have to have the land to build independence on. So right. that was a good move and we're hoping that, uh, that uh, you know, Mugabe uh, legacy doesn't die in vain. Unfortunate thing well, comes in Zimbabwe, right. the, the sanctions, right. and then in some situations, other African countries right. are going to back him. And we saw that but, what uh, happened with Mugabe. I mean, let's get to the real. Right. Mugabe is not the president. It was not the end of his administration. He was, if uh, for the lack of a better term, um, removed. And of course, there's a lot of a lot of uh, and, and based upon having friends and comrades in Zimbabwe and being able to talk to them, we understand that. Although it was a peaceful transference, there was no violence. It was still not the transference of that political legacy that we hoped for in regards to Mugabe. And as like you said, uh, 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 we have to uh, wonder what goes on as far as the youth league and what happens in regards to uh, the transference of that power to the next generation as we're dealing with today. You know, but of course... As we have, and as they have, there's been a, a lot of um, interference with uh, Western powers in regards to it, even though they achieved that level of liberation that they have. They had the uh, interjection of the MDC government, which is financed by, you know, Morgan Shangarai, who just transitioned. They had the uh, interference of them during the, from 2006 or seven. that was the British created political organization in opposition to Mugabe, able to be defeated, even though they had to go through a period of power sharing with them. So we're not talking about just brutish. We're talking about, you know, political scientist level ish with Mugabe. Understanding, keeping your people alive. The amazing thing about Mugabe, like Fidel, is that you couldn't touch him. You know you want to take him out, <laughs> but you couldn't do it. That's the thing that, you know, McConaughey, like I tell you, uh, that's over there, um, uh, what we talk about, how do you do that? How you keep him alive? Like Fidel, 638 assassination attempts, you know, wow. still walk around, go out on your own terms. <laughs> Mugabe the same. And then still even interfuge in between the government, the comrades that fought with you during the War of Liberation. Now, they... And the real deal with it, let me just go and put it out there. The ZANU-PF government and the Zimbabwe army, although they came to the uh, victorious war of liberation together, are two separate entities. One runs the government, one live in barracks and deal with controlling troops. And when you look at the aspect of government from any country, you have to understand there's always a difference in those kind of things. So in the population, you're looking at sanctions, people being denied goods because the country next to you won't trade eggs and bread and milk with you because the cracker says so. That's what it boils down to, sanctions. The cats around you ain't all the way down. So you got to figure out how to do this thing. You got to buy your bread and eggs and milk from way 10,000 miles away when the cat next door got it. So people get, if they ain't got it, they get, if it takes so long to ship it there, and the people can't get up in the morning, go to the store and get it in, because it take a few more days. Now you got trouble. Now people get irritated. They can't feed their children. Then you get opposition against you. That's the way the sanctions work. That's how it affects you on the day-to-day, -day, on the ground level. We can't imagine it. When we get up, we go to Kroger, the, the shit there. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's that's real. Um, for real, for real. Um, um, the, we, you know, we live in America. We're the best dressed up, provided where, for slaves in the world. To where, you, you know, know <laughs> the, the white folks that, uh, that, have, that dominate us have these supermarkets and have these yeah. chains of all the things you need from the So they're going to let you get that. So you on. go stand in front of it and beg. Right. And get what you need. But, in, but if you in these countries in Africa, African nation and, 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 and in Haiti, black and in nations, these places, man, look, um, you will literally sit there for five, six, seven, eight, ten days, and you and your children will starve to death because nobody will give you nothing because of the ring of economic uh, uh, news that they have around the world based on the resources. Yeah, so most countries are, are shaking up, so they're like, well, they're, they're sanctioning Haiti, so you're Jamaica, you're Barbados and Trinidad. Yeah. You're like, uh, well, white man, I'm down with you, and then you just like yeah. cut your brother out. And yeah. Then, you know, instead, Say, I ain't gonna, I ain't instead of all of us are saying, fuck these European and American. Right. Uh, We're gonna take it in Haiti, goddamn. And the American uh, nation, and you know, and let's yeah. band together and stick together. So that's been one of the weakness of us. Uh, um, you know, we live, we're, right. we're, we're caught in a society where, day, you know, you're where everything is run to America and Europe. But now, right. the, the good thing about we, we live in a society, in a world where technology you know, is you, you, have, you, have, you have India, you have right. China, as our Arthur Lewis, remember that brother? Yeah, remember yeah, that video? Yeah, 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 man. <laughs> Beautiful illustrated. Yes, so yes. now we as a people can Pan work with other uh, other nations of color and, and work together. It, you know, we don't have to be this locked into where, you know, we're in, in the mercy of uh, US. So if you're Jamaica uh, and you're, you're, you know, you're, you're caught in a situation where America does say, hey, um, you don't do what we want you to do. None of our tourists from America, as a matter of fact, we call our European brothers and say they'll lock off all passports going to Jamaica and all flights. And that's the realistic threat you deal with. So you're always mm -hmm. in a vulnerable situation. So Robert Mugabe, despite all those things that he faced, right. he realized that he must be the example to stand up. And even if his nation suffered to a point for the future benefit of other African nations, to make this change and I really believe these things are happening and fam we have some good stuff for you and some of the other videos we're going to talk about yeah. as far as Mugabe legacy continue right, right, and right. The, the, the other the because the expansion of <laughs> Mugabe's legacy we're experiencing right now in February 2018 with Juju Malima and <laughs> the real war we've been wanting to carry out in Southern Africa that's a lot of them crackers down in Azania that they took over our land only 70% down there and brother uh, Juju them down there cutting them crackers heads right now by the thousands invading properties you I've know seen my using technology you know ritual <laughs> sacrifice of European that's what the deal is right now you know what I'm talking about absolutely family man yeah we're going to go into that a whole lot um, as uh, we continue where because what we want to continue with you is, you know, we talk about Garvey, we talk about Malcolm. You know, there's always a continuation of the greatness of our people. Not saying that we have to focus on, on this right. one great leader, but it's, it's more of the energy. But you always have one or two great figures right. that, that represent and, and, that energy. And, 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 and based upon, you know, kind of wrapping it up, bringing it all the way from what we were dealing with the Black Panther uh, movie from the dude coming from the diaspora back to the continent. That thing is what fear, what Malcolm X told us. We have to build that bridge, that link. That's why it's so important what you're doing. But it's why it's so important the knowledge that we're bringing to the diaspora uh, audiences that we're talking to here. For them to understand the process, to get your mind, the thoughts that you have, the molecules that are changed by the matriculation of your thoughts that you have manifest the destiny that you are thinking about in your mind. So when you cover those gaps in the organization information that it takes to actually make that happen and move those things towards actual concrete actions then the gaps will be filled in uh for you but you have to have the faith to step out there and do it on your own first before those things can happen you know and so that's why i said i appreciate you in the way that you uh continue that line of practical action of actually coming here and say okay brother sister i'll take you for you for three thousand dollars and you can try to figure it out on your own how much it costs but if you think it worth what i'm telling you for you to be able to stay at all these places and see all these things for this amount of money then talk to me and i'll take you over there and that's practical pan-africanism from where we are here today and it leaves room for what it is in your mind in order to be fulfilled if you will take the energy and the time to read the information and study that is the key to it all 
in order for you to move from where you are into a more expanded level of consciousness and freedom and liberation as African people. And when we do that in unity, then this shit all over with. Excellent, excellent family. And you know, in closing on what we've talked about on the, the legacy of uh, Mugabe, um, and just like the legacy of uh, Garvey, Nkrumah, Malcolm X, uh, the legacy is a foundation to educate us. Um, I don't think we've ever had any person that have walked this earth that have been the, the greatest leader and have never made at least one mistake. So right. one of the things that we can learn, we can learn from the greatness of our ancestors. Yep. And also we can definitely, and, you know, and not all of uh, them are ancestors. Uh, and the, also the living legends and more right. of them we're going to talk about. But it's, it's basically, uh, we, we have to look at the, the greatness of what they did and also look at the flaws and then learn from it all and be able to put ourselves in a better position to be the leaders that uh, you know we want to see our generation and our future become. Uh, so uh, we you know we definitely give uh, you know much respect and a strong black fist to all the brothers and sisters that have come before us and the ones that are in this fight. And together, you know, Africa rise and we as a nation and people rise. And family will definitely keep it strong.